Hi, I'm Ben Wilmore, and here I want to show you how to get more consistency when working between different documents. Because sometimes you can work in one document and the colors seem to work the way you expect, and then you go in and you just grab a color to paint with, you switch to a different document and you paint, and you don't get the color you expect. And that has to do with not knowing how to really manage working between different documents. And there's one concept that has to do with color that's rather important. So let's dive in and take a look. Here I have three different documents. They all contain what is exactly the same colors. At least if you were to print these colors out from these three documents, they would look identical. Well, these aren't made identically. And that's because when you create a brand new document by coming up here, when you create that document under advanced, there's a choice called color profile. And this choice right here tells Photoshop the exact shades of red, green, and blue your image should be made out of. And if you have documents where this setting uh, varies, where one document is set to sRGB and a different document is set to Adobe, then you can have some oddities when working between those documents. Now that will most commonly happen when someone else gives you a file and when they created the file they used a different setting than you're used to. So let's see how it could mess things up. So the only difference between really these three files is that they were made using different color spaces. If you look in the lower left of each one of the documents you'll see the color space that they're in. The top one is in sRGB. The middle one is in Adobe RGB, and the bottom one is in Pro Photo. But we're creating the same colors, visibly. The problem is, each one of these is using different shades of red, green, and blue as their core, and let's see how that affects things. Well, let's say I work on this top image, and I come over here and grab my eyedropper tool. And I say, I really like this color. So I click on it to say, that's the color I'd like to paint with or fill somewhere else. Then I switch to a different document. I switch to the bottom document. Ignore those little crosshairs. We'll get to those later. Uh, and I select an area. Let's just select this. And then I'm going to fill that area. All I'm going to do is use a keyboard shortcut that fills with my foreground color. And that's option delete on a Mac. That would be alt backspace and windows. And Take a look at the difference. They look quite different. Now let's go the opposite direction. I'll start off down here at the bottom document. I'll again use the eyedropper tool and I'll click within the original color. Then let's switch to that top document. Let's grab our marquee tool here and make a selection to choose where we're gonna fill the image. And then once again, I'll do option delete to fill. And now you notice the color got mellower. So we got a mellower version here and a more vivid version there. Well, what if we went to the image that's in the middle? Well, we would still get a different version of this color. It just might not be quite as mellow or it might be more mellow. It all depends which one of the do these documents we started from and which ones we ended in. So what's going on here? Well, that color space that is in the lower left of each one of these pictures defines the color of red, green, and blue this image is made out of. And those choices are quite different. Let me show you. Here's a special document. In here, I'm showing you the most vivid version of red, green, and blue for each one of these color spaces. That means if you were to actually go in the color picker to choose a color, and you went to here and grabbed the most vivid version of red, over here, do you see it says R255? Well, that's the highest that number can go to. It just can't go any higher. And then none of the other two. Well, that's what I've filled in up here at the top with all three of the color spaces. But I don't know about you, I don't know how, how, what this looks like on video, but I could hardly see any difference between these. I can see a slight difference here, and a slight difference here, and even a tiny difference here, but I doubt you can see it on video. And that's simply because my computer screen is incapable of showing me how vivid these three colors for Pro Photo are supposed to look. And it just can't display things that are that um, colorful. Had I spent 10 times as much on my computer screen, then I could have gotten one that would show more of the difference between these colors. But we can simulate the difference. What I'm going to do is tell Photoshop to make this red, 
the same as the most vivid red that my computer screen is capable of displaying. And then change these other shades to make it so they change an equal amount. And therefore we can see how big of a difference they're supposed to be here. So to accomplish that, I'm going to do a little trick. You shouldn't need to do this, but I'm going to come in here and I'm going to actually tell this to make these as vivid as the red, green, and blue that's used for video because therefore it should be able to show it on your screen. And so I think if I come down here, take me just a second, there should be, where's Rec 709? There it is. And then I'll say preserve. Okay. Uh, you shouldn't need to do this, but this is just so I can show you how much of a difference there is between the red, green, and blue that is in ProPhoto RGB, Adobe RGB, and sRGB. Now, just know that sRGB is not this mellow of colors at all. It's that ProPhoto is so colorful that my computer screen is incapable of showing things that colorful. So I just had it take these three colors and make them the most vivid colors we can display in video. And therefore, these are changing the same amount, and you could compare these to see how big of a difference there is between them. So if I have one image in Pro Photo RGB, that means it's made out of this color of red, this color of green, and this color of blue. Close that. Uh, and if I do Adobe RGB, it's instead made out of these three colors. And if it's sRGB, it's these three colors. And any time I use the eyedropper tool to click and sample a color, all it's doing is measuring the amount of red, green, and blue that that particular color is made out of. And when I switch to a different document, it's using the exact same amount of red, green, and blue when I fill that uh, selection. It's just the shade of red, green, and blue the document is made out of is different. So I would need to use different RGB numbers in order to make it look consistent. And I'll show you that. So in general, when we use the eyedropper tool, and we're eyedroppering in this document, and let's just say it's the square of red, but we use it over here. That's how big of a change we're gonna see in the reds, because it's gonna use the most vivid red it could use here, like 255 red, and your computer is gonna expect to see this, but instead it's gonna show you that. If we went the other direction, then if I were to use whatever number is showing up in an sRGB image, and I fill something over here in Pro Photo, suddenly the colors are gonna look dramatically more vivid. But let me turn off this preview, because if I forget, it uh, could mess me up. And let's go back to our images. So when I took the numbers from sRGB, and I used them down here, it didn't change the numbers. The numbers themselves, the RGB numbers are identical right here and right here. The difference is that this is using more vivid versions of red, green, and blue. So those numbers produce a different color. So in order to create these colors and make them look consistent between these three different documents that are in different color spaces, then Photoshop had to use different RGB numbers on each document. I'll show you what they are, because I wrote them down. If you compare these, you'll notice that here, if we look at the amount of blue being used, as we go to a color space that's using a more mellow version of blue, we need more of that blue in order to create this. And if we go to the mellowest version of red, green, and blue, we need even more of that blue to create this shade. And if we go over here to red, if you look at the number here for red, you'll find when we're working in really vivid versions of red, green, and blue, which is what you have in Pro Photo, you don't need all that much red to create something like this. But if you go to a different color space that's using not as vivid version of red, you need more of it in order to create the same color. And if you go to the mellowest version of red, green, and blue, which is sRGB, you're gonna need a whole lot of it. The highest this number could go to is 255, so we've almost maxed out the amount of red that's there. So how can I avoid this issue? Well, the only reason we're having this issue is because we're using a method that is just blatantly using the red, green, blue numbers from one file and using them in a different image that has a different color space. 
And so anytime you work between documents that are in different color spaces, you don't want to use the RGB numbers out of one document in another. And that's what would happen if you used the eyedropper tool to sample a color. It's also what would happen if you used the info panel. And oftentimes you end up using the info panel when you do adjustments. If you want to match the color of one area to another, you get the RGB numbers to match in two areas and they look the same. But that's not the case when you go between documents that are in different color spaces. If the documents are in different color spaces and you want things to look consistent when you move between them, here's what I would do. You have a couple choices and one of which is to copy and paste. I'm going to choose part of this green and I'm just going to choose copy. Then I'm going to go to the document at the bottom and I'll make a selection where I want that to end up and then it'll center it on that area when I choose paste. And it pasted and I can't even tell something was pasted there. That's because the colors match. But if I use my move tool and move it over, you can see there's a little square of color that is, was pasted in and it does match what I expected it to. I'll work on the layer that's underneath. Let's make sure we can go the other direction. I'll select an area of that green. I'll type Command C to copy. Then I'll come up here to the document at the top and I'll do Command V to paste. And it just pasted it in and I can't see it there. But if I move it over with my move tool, you can see that something was actually pasted in and it does match the color it was supposed to be. And that's because anytime you copy and paste, Photoshop is doing something behind the scenes. It's actually going up here to the edit menu and it's choosing this thing. It's called convert to profile. And it's saying let's convert from the whatever mode that this image started in, the bottom image, to whatever the top one is. And it's just if you use the eyedropper tool, it's not converting. So copy and paste between your documents and then you'll be able to get a consistent color between them. But that's not your only choice. You have one other choice. And that is just don't work in these different color spaces. What you could do is if somebody gives you an image that's in a particular color space, you could come up here and say convert to profile and say, hey, I'm going to be working with this image alongside another image that's not in Profoto. Instead, it's in sRGB. So you just change the destination space to sRGB and click OK. Now that image should look the same because it just tried to maintain the appearance now, since this down here in the corner matches, these two images are now in the same color space. And because of that, now if I use my eyedropper tool and I click on this green, I can switch up to that top document and I can make a selection and I can fill it. Let's option delete and it's going to match because they're both using the same color space and therefore the RGB numbers mean the same thing in both documents. So here's one time when you really need to think about this. If you're ever talking to somebody else on the telephone or you're emailing someone else and you're trying to describe a color, if you're trying to precisely describe a color, I find it's really common that people write down the RGB numbers that they see in the color picker. So you grab the eyedropper tool or some other tool, click within your image to grab a color, and then you look in the color picker and you see these RGB numbers and you write them down. You email it to somebody or you tell it to them over the phone. Well, just know that that might not produce the same color. It's only going to produce the same color if they're working in the same color space. So you could say the RGB numbers and then right below it say sRGB or Adobe RGB or Pro Photo, and at least that would tell the person that's receiving the numbers enough about that color to truly define it. But it needs both of those pieces. But there is another way. Instead of using RGB numbers, there are another set of numbers that appears in the color picker where it would be consistent between documents. And therefore, if you use that numbering system when emailing or talking to somebody over the phone, they could open their color picker, type in those numbers, and regardless of what color space that person is working in, they would get the color you're talking about. So let's figure out how that's done. Well, I'm going to take these images and first I'm going to revert them because I just want to get rid of that secondary color that we have in the green area. So I'll click on each one and choose revert. 
That gets me back to the saved version of the image. Then instead of using RGB numbers, we're gonna end up using lab numbers. So if I'm working in the topmost image and I click within this area, then I click on my foreground color to get to the color picker because that's where I can see those RGB numbers. If I'm gonna email them to somebody else, instead of giving them RGB numbers, give them these numbers right over here because those numbers would be consistent regardless of what color space they're working in. If you wanna see that, what I'm gonna do is you could also see these numbers in the info panel. In the info panel, instead of looking at RGB, you can click on this little eyedropper and change it to LAB. And if you use whatever numbers are there and you tell them to somebody over the phone, they type in those numbers in their color picker, they're gonna see the same color that you were looking at. Or another way of doing this is here, I have these little crosshairs. Those are known as color samplers. And I'm just gonna show you how to make those. If you go to your eyedropper tool, in here is the color sampler tool. And that allows you to click up to four times within your image. And if you do, you'll get four readouts down here at the bottom of the info panel. And those, the default setting will be probably RGB. And all I've done is click on this little eyedropper and change them to lab. And I changed each one of the four. So let's take a look and see if those numbers are consistent. Now remember the RGB numbers between these documents are not consistent. I'll remind you by putting them on my screen. But now let's look at the lab numbers. Well, here are the four areas that we're going to be sampling. Here are the lab numbers for the top document. Just notice that I was careful with what colors I used to make easy to look at numbers that are all uh, have a zero on the end of them. And then I'm gonna to switch to the middle document. But when I do, you watch the info panel. Look at these numbers and see if they change. When I go to the middle document, we're now sampling the colors that are in there. The numbers did not change. Then I'll go to the bottom document. And again, you'll notice the numbers did not change. So anytime you're working with RGB numbers, know that those numbers all by themselves are not enough to precisely describe a color. You also need one more piece of information and that is the color space because it actually defines the exact colors of red, green, and blue that are being used. And in the info panel, we can go to the side menu, choose panel options, and one of the choices here is document profile. If I have that turned on, which I usually do, you're gonna see it right here. And therefore, if you're ever talking to somebody else or you're ever working between multiple documents, when you look at the RGB numbers and you think about using those numbers in another document, if you glance right down there, you can tell when you switch between the documents if you're in the co same color space. If you are, go ahead and use the RGB numbers. But if the color space changes, then either copy and paste when you wanna move something between those two documents or use lab numbers because they would give you a consistent result. So if you wanna get consistency between your documents and you're just trying to describe a color, either use lab numbers because they're consistent regardless of what color space you're working in, or instead just grab a little part of that image, copy, switch to the other document and paste that's gonna convert it to that other uh, color space. The colors will look the same, and it's just that now the numbers will have changed, so there are numbers you can use. And we have one final option I mentioned earlier, which is you could go to the edit menu, and there was a choice called convert to profile. And that just means take this document that was in one color space and change it to another, because I just want it to be consistent, so I can use the RGB numbers between them and know that they're defining the same colors. Hopefully that gives you another little hint as to why colors aren't always consistent in Photoshop. I'm Ben Wilmore, and I'll see you next time.